Okay, I think we're live. Um, we are definitely uh, having fun with the live stream today. It is going in and out, so that's been really interesting. If you are just joining me um, on YouTube or Facebook, I was over on Amazon Live, but now <laughs> I'm not anymore. So um, yeah, that was that was interesting. Well, anyway. Um, I'm back and uh, we're going to start the live stream talking about the iPad Pro and hopefully we'll be able to finish talking about the iPad Pro before we lose our, our uh, feed again. Um, I am also going to try to make sure I can see everybody in the chat. Uh, we'll do our best. <laughs> It's always interesting when we do a live stream because it is live and uh, that means that things happen that we have no control over. So there you go. Um, okay, I am coming to you from my tiny studio, my tiny uh, video studio basically, where I do tiny things, tiny video things and mostly, mostly digital work in this studio. But uh, we're talking today about the um, iPad Pro and I'm going to go to the overhead camera here just for a quick second to actually show you the iPad Pro. Let's just see if I can make it work. Bear with me guys. There we go. Get rid of all the uh, detritus that's in the way. There's the iPad Pro. You're looking at my uh, gallery in Procreate and um, earlier I was talking about before I lost the stream Earlier, I was talking about the iPad Pro and the functions, some of the great functions that it has. I was about to jump into the uh, discussion around the Apple Pencil and why it's so, uh, I think, important to have that Apple Pencil uh, instead of just a random stylus that you get that may not do the job. So let me uh, demonstrate what I mean about the Apple Pencil. And if you're with me over on Amazon, the um, Apple Pencil second generation is highlighted in your carousel. And if you're not with me over on Amazon, if you're with me on Facebook or YouTube, jump over to Amazon. You can look at that link that's scrolling right below me and you can jump over there and join the live stream if you'd like to do that. You're welcome to. I can actually see your chat a little bit better if you're on the Amazon live stream than I can if you're in Facebook or YouTube. It's a little tougher for me to see those chat. I only have two eyes, <laughs> so I'm trying to see all the chat boxes at the same time. It's a little tough. Okay, um, let's look at why I'm so crazy for the Apple Pencil and why I think it's a waste of money and time and effort to even get a different type of stylus. I mean, this is my opinion, you guys, and, um, but I do have to say I've been a professional artist for a long time, and so when it comes to creating high-level artwork, whether it's digital or analog, you want the tools to do the job, right? So let's, uh, let's look at this. I'm gonna pull up my Apple Pencil here, and I'm in the gallery right now in Procreate, but let's uh, create a new artwork. We'll do that by tapping that plus sign and that'll pull down our canvas panel. And I'll just grab a 6,000 by 6,000 pixel um, canvas. That's a pretty good size. That's gonna print out at about 24 by 24 inches. That's a really good size for a digital image. It's a big file. And if you are working on a, a smaller iPad or an older iPad, you may not have the option to have that big of uh, a canvas size. So bear that in mind if you want to do professional level graphic, uh, professional level digital work, you're going to probably need the, the iPad Pro 12.9 inch and you're probably going to need, I would say 256 gigabytes or one terabyte, a 512 uh, gigabytes or one terabyte of, of storage if you want to do those really big files. That's just the way it goes because they're big files. And now with the new Procreate 5.2 update, we have the option of more layers if we are, um, are working on the iPad Pro. So there you go. That's, that's another reason that you want to get a good um, 
device that does the job for you, right? Now, if you're just getting started, it may be that you just start um, at a little bit lower entry level iPad. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to scroll through. If you're with me on Amazon, check the carousel. I'm going to scroll over and I'm going to um, highlight an iPad Pro 12.9 inch, 128 gigabytes that's coming in today at 479. That's half price what a new iPad Pro would be. So, and those are always limited. The amounts of that they have of those available are always limited. So, um, pay attention to that. But when you get those refurbished items from Amazon, you're always going to have a 90-day guarantee. So, you you can look at that as a, you know, fail-safe. You get it and it doesn't do what you want it to, you've got 90 days to turn it back in. Okay, enough said about that. Let's look at why I love the Apple Pencil so much. I'm going to go back and scroll back to the carousel and highlight that Apple Pencil second generation. And you know, just real quick, let's take a look at that on the Amazon page too because I want to be sure that um, that you can actually see the difference. So let's just make sure we are live. It's just been a crazy tech day because the tech has just been going crazy, bonkers. So <laughs> I'm like, I was live, now I'm not, now I'm live again. So yeah, crazy. All right, I'm gonna highlight the um, Apple Pencil second generation for you on the Amazon page. Let's take a quick look at that. Um, the reason I'm highlighting this is that I want you all, if you're going to get the Apple Pencil, even if you have an older iPad, make sure you're getting the right pencil that's compatible with your iPad. So to that end, um, if you look on the Apple Pencil page on Amazon, you should be able to see that whether you're on YouTube or uh, you, uh, Facebook, you can still see that, app, that Amazon page. Um, take a look at the compatibility here. Down, scroll down, and you're going to see that it's compatible, all of the iPads that it's compatible with, okay? So make sure you get the right pencil for the right iPad. And, um, you know, there are lots of refurbished iPads over on Amazon, so you're pretty much guaranteed if you want to get an iPad and just get started without having to mortgage the whole farm, you know, you can get in. Uh, to an iPad for a really reasonable price, okay? And it's it's guaranteed for 90 days, so you, you really don't have anything to lose. Now, talking about this pencil, why am I so crazy about this pencil? Well, and why do I, why do I think that you shouldn't get another type of stylus? Well, here's the reason. I'm gonna, as soon as I get this uh, window to close, there, that's what I wanna, I wanna do. Um, I'm going to show you what I mean here. So take a look at, you're looking at the Procreate app on my iPad and you can see in that little window to the right, those are my gestures. When you start working on the iPad Pro, the 12.9 inch, you have no home button. So those gestures are going to be really important to you. So um, take a look here. I'm just going to pinch out, pinch in, you know, it's very intuitive, turn it, that kind of thing. Now, what I want to talk to you about with the pencil is the way that this pencil behaves like a real pencil on paper. And I, I'm not kidding. <laughs> I'm not kidding. It's true. So I'm going to go up here to my brush. I'm going to go to sketching and I'm going to pick 6B pencil. And then I'm going to go to my color and I'll get something that's kind of black. Looks kind of like a charcoal pencil. Now, um, I've been drawing for a long time, you guys. I've, I've been a professional artist for a long time. And so I know what real pencil on paper looks like. And I've done that a million times. And when I started during the pandemic, when I couldn't go to a, a drawing group, I couldn't sit in front of a live model. Um, I was like, what am I gonna do? And so a lot of the model guilds were doing online drawing sessions. And all of a sudden I had a drawing session on my iPad, in my pajamas, you know, in my living room. It was amazing, amazing. And this pencil is what made it so amazing. So watch this. Um, this is, you guys have that screen. Okay, good. Um, so this is the Apple Pencil, you know, and it's like, yeah, so what? what? What's the big deal? 
that looks like a pencil stroke, right? Um, but then if you, let's uh, clear that. If I'm doing something, say I'm doing a figure and I want to do something with hair or I want a shade or something like that, I'm gonna turn my pencil on the side, just like I would if it was a real pencil in a drawing group. I'm gonna turn it on the side and use the side of it to create shadow and shading and things like that. Now, how did they do that, first of all? I mean, I can't even wrap my head around that. Secondly, look at that. That looks like graphite on paper. And you're not gonna get that with a cheap stylus or some you know, knockoff stylus. You're just not gonna get that kind of responsiveness and functionality. So there you go. That's my take on it. It's just my opinion. But um, I mean, you know, my, my feeling is get a good tool and you know, get the job done that way. Okay, so that's a little bit about the pencil. We've got, that horrible sound is back, Nando. Oh my goodness. Okay, let's see if I can do something about that. Hold on. My robot voice came back, huh? Oh man. Okay. Well, let me know. Um, let me know if it's back. What happened? Oh my goodness. Yeah, we've had trouble with sound. Um, not the robot, just the buzzing. Yeah. Okay. So I'm pretty sure I know what that is. Let's. I've tried a couple of things and I think it is internet problems. It's, a, it's the feed, the actual internet feed, uh, because my feed just dropped out a minute ago and completely crashed. So I have a feeling that that's the issue. So sorry guys, if the sound is, is too bad, let me know and I'll come back, you know, I'll go off and come back in 15 minutes or so. Um, let me see if I can hear it. Hang on a quick second. I'm going to see if I can hear it. We had a horrible time even getting the feed to work, so I'm actually surprised. Hang on a quick second. Okay, maybe it's gone. Yeah. I do believe it has something to do with the um, with the feed because that seems to be the issue. Um, you know, it gets jammed up and we're all on the on the feed at the same time. So, um, sorry about that, you guys. I hope uh, I hope it's not too bad. Um, I will um, jump I'll jump ahead. Yeah, it's probably Amazon. And, uh, the platform's just really crowded right now. I will jump ahead and uh, we will leave the iPad for a minute. We will circle back around though. I will circle back around because I want to show you some fun stuff with clipping mask and do some masking and some fun stuff like that. So we will circle back around. But what I want to do right now is show you a little bit about some fun holiday themed watercolors that you might want to do that are super simple make great gifts. You can make your own cards. Let's look at that. I'm going to get the iPad out of the way. Whoops. I'm going to try to get the iPad out of the way. There we go. So the first thing that's up in your carousel is the Strathmore watercolor tiles. And I'm going to put the overhead camera on so you can see these and we'll come in a little bit closer so you can see them. There we go like that. Okay, these are the Strathmore watercolor tiles and um, I love this shape because it's square. You get, and they're highlighted in your carousel right now, you get um, uh, 10 tiles, you get 10 pages 
and they're uh, the six by six inch square and they make wonderful little holiday images like this. You can do really sweet little Christmas things. These are my abstracted Christmas ornaments. You know, you can do all kinds of fun stuff with them, right? And next to them, right next to them is the Strathmore watercolor cards. Those are in your, hello Gustavo, how are you? Welcome, welcome. Um, the watercolor cards, these are the Strathmore watercolor cards that are right next in your carousel. And um, these, we had, a, we had the most fun the other day making these sweet little handmade Christmas cards. And these are the Strathmore watercolor cards. And just a very simple, very, very simple watercolors. I love my bunny rabbit, my bunny rabbit with the Christmas tree. <laughs> um, Berry Christmas, you all. <laughs> little Christmas trees. Just super simple. It doesn't have to be fancy, but you know what? When people get these, they are thrilled to the moon. And especially if you sit down with the kids and do these, these are very simple circle, you know, triangle, not hard to do at all. And the Strathmore watercolor cards come tin to a box with the envelopes. You guys could do that at dinner time or, uh, you know, after school or whatever and the kids have a great time you'll have a great time and then whoever gets these is going to just be over the moon you know those are going to be the christmas cards that get pulled out year after year after year and put on the fireplace you know those are the ones that grandma keeps right so that's the strathmore watercolor cards and then the strathmore um artist tiles they're the same paper but they are the, um, the square shape. And you can just pop those in a little frame. I mean, who would not love that in a little frame? Grandma would go crazy if she got that, right? If, you're, if your child or you, your best friend, whatever, you're gonna do that, pop it into a little frame and then give that as a present. I just think that those kind of presents when it comes to the holidays, People really love handmade items. I mean, it's just shows so much care, you know. Like you didn't just run to some store and order a gazillion things and wrap it up. You spent the time to do it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Your girls love to make cards, Gustavo. That's awesome. Yeah. The the this is a great little deal. You get ten cards and envelopes, and the price today is ten bucks. I mean, that's a dollar a card. You cannot buy a card in the store for a dollar. You can't. I mean, where are you going to buy a card for a dollar? And not only that, you know, when, when they send these out to their aunties and their best friends and their, you know, favorite teacher, oh, that's a lot of brownie points. Now, to get those lovely little images on there, let's do one, you guys. Let's just do one. Um, Let's do, what should we do? Should we do a Christmas tree? I'll do a Christmas tree. So here's my Strathmore. Let's go back to the overhead so you can see what I'm doing. There's my Strathmore card. Now here is my favorite watercolor brush. This is my Aqua Elite. I'm gonna highlight that for you because these are such yummy brushes and also they are animal friendly. There is no animal uh, used in the production of this brush. Hi, Evans family. How are you? I'm having a great day. I am now anyway, since the live stream seems to be <laughs> still streaming. Um, so yeah, these are wonderful synthetic sable brushes. I cannot tell the difference between these and a real sable brush. I can't, they're just that good. So let me get a little water. I get a tiny bit of water here, a little Scotia water. And I'm going to get my core watercolor set. Now, this isn't a, a professional watercolor set because I am a professional water, I'm a professional artist, right? So, give me one second. There we go. Okay. All right. Um, 
Perfect. Okay. So your watercolor um, set that I have there is the Golden Core watercolor set, and that is um, a professional set. So if you are looking for a professional grade watercolor set, this is going to be a good set for you. If you are looking for um, if you're looking for a more of a, a student grade set, then you'll, you'll want to get a different kind of set for your kids maybe. But this particular set is a really good set. You can use this with your kids. You can use this with your, with your pals by any means. Um, you can definitely do that. But um, you'll, you'll pay a little bit more. But it is a professional grade and the colors are gorgeous. So that's going to be the difference. So let's open up my set, which you can see I use my set a lot lots of messy uh, paint in my set, you know, good use of, of uh, paint. So let's do a little watercolor here. I'll just do a little simple little Christmas tree here. Let me get a little green and I'm going to go just like so, like that. Just a real simple little Christmas tree like that. And one more, like a little branch or a trunk there. Maybe we'll do a few more little leaves here, like so. Now see, that's not hard at all. That is super, super easy, right? Super easy. Yeah, somebody's spamming the chat, huh? Hibiscus tea, Nando? Oh, well, just ignore them. They just don't have anything better to do. But hey, you know, that's the way that goes. Um, so let's, what should we put on the top of that? Let's see, how about a star? Let's put a red, uh, a pink star. I would do a silver one, but I don't have any silver in my watercolor set, so I'm going to go for magenta. Um, Evans, you're doing okay, but you're fighting with your internet provider. <laughs> oh dear. I know. Sometimes don't you just feel like you should get two tin cans and a string and be done with it? I know. I know. I know what you mean. So there's my little star, little tiny star, little bitty star for my Christmas tree. Okay, and let's put some Christmas ornaments on our tree. How about, we'll just put a couple of little circles here and there, you know, just a little bit of watercolor, little ornaments, right? Now, the fun thing we can do here is let's have some red ornaments before I before I do the snow, we'll have a couple of red ornaments. Okay, little red ornaments there. Good enough. Now, I'll do the snow. And I want to do the snow with the um, acrylic paint pens. So let me scooch over here. I'm highlighting the acrylic paint pens in your carousel. And Hey, how's our buzzing? How's our buzz? Thank you, Gustavo. Thank you so much. How's the buzzing doing, you guys? Are we doing okay on the buzzing? I know we're having a little trouble with our sound today. So I've got the paint pens highlighted for you. And I want to just, um, I'm going to use the medium size paint pens. These are the Artistro acrylic paint markers. And do I have those in the, um, I've got the fine point highlighted right now. Let's, let me see, do I have the medium point in there for you? I might have forgotten to put the medium point in there. Fiddlesticks. Okay, well, um, I, I have the fine point highlighted, but you know, while we're looking at that, um, if you're looking at the um, fine point, that's this set right here which is a lovely, lovely set. Comes with 
all of these wonderful fine point markers. I'll use those in just a minute. For the medium point artistro, I'm gonna pull out the silver. If I can get it out, I will. Ah, everything wants to come out at once. They all wanna come out at once. Okay, silver. Now these are the artistro. And when you are um, looking at the Artistro uh, st uh, store, if you go over to the Artistro page and you're gonna get the paint markers, make sure that you put in my code and you'll get extra savings, Acrylic Diva. Put that code in, Acrylic Diva, all one word, all together, all caps and that will save you an extra 10%. Now, I've got my, my Christmas tree, I need snow. So with these Artistro paint pens, you wanna shake, 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 shake. And the first time you use them, you're gonna prime them. I don't have to prime these because I've already been using them. So shake, and then snow, we need snow, let it snow. Um, so these are perfect for making those little snow dots. Can you guys see that? Let me, let me come in, come in a little bit. There we go, okay. <laughs> I went crazy with the camera. Um, okay, now you can see my little snow everywhere. And I'm left a little room down there because I'm gonna take the fine point and let's get our fine point. I think we're gonna use red because red seems appropriate. Let me make sure that I have it primed properly. Let's make sure I have it primed. Yep, primed, excellent. Okay. Now then, we're gonna say, what are we gonna say? We're gonna say, uh, Merry Christmas. <laughs> let's, let's say Happy Holidays. It's more inclusive, isn't it? So we're gonna say Happy Holidays. Let's put a little heart there. Happy Holidays, okay? Now, who wouldn't love a little card like that instead of a store-bought card, right? Yeah. Auntie, auntie, best friend, you know, everybody's gonna love that instead of a store-bought card. So that is the um, paint markers. That's the fine tip set there that I used. And I also used the medium set for my snow. That was my snow. Those are wonderful markers. I really like those markers. Now we also, just to recap, we also used our Strathmore watercolor cards. That's in your carousel. And you get 10 cards and envelopes, right? All ready to go. All they need is a stamp and your artwork. And you can uh, do your own Christmas cards, right? your own holiday cards. You can make it, and you know what? You can do these any time of year. You can do Valentine's and uh, the, you know, random Hello Tuesday card, you know? You can do anything you want. So there you go. That's a little Christmas, Christmas uh, holiday card for you. All right, let's go over to, um, where are we? Oh, we're looking at watercolor sets. Let's look at, look at some of the watercolor sets I've got in the carousel for you. Um, this one that you're looking at right here is the introductory set, the golden introductory set. And let's put that on the, in the carousel so you know which one I'm talking about. That is this one, the introductory set. It comes with, if I can get my fingers to work, it comes with six tubes in different colors. And the fact, you know, the fact that I love uh, this little palette, I love the palette that comes with it. It's really handy. You also get your um, golden or your core color chart here so you can get other colors if you want to. 
and that's super cool. This one's really handy. And then the other one that I have for you in the carousel is the big set, the big 24 set. Look at this baby. Now let me tell you, if you have an artist in your family, if you have an, a watercolorist in your family, and they get this under the Christmas tree, your brownie points will never expire. <laughs> your brownie points will be good forever. <laughs> so check it out. This is the Core 24, and it is really beautiful. Nando says, you like all the cards as long as they have money. <laughs> Oh, I know what you mean. You love those Christmas cards or those holiday cards that have the little uh, check inside, right? Well, this 24, maybe, you know, maybe uh, Grandma will send you the check to get yourself the big core set, right? So here's the big core 24 set with that big palette that comes with the set. And then you've got 24 tubes of color. Ooh, wee! That is delicious, right? I won't even read them all to you because there's so many in here, right? But uh, the thing about Core Watercolor is it's so heavily pigmented, it's so strong that this is gonna last you a very, very, very long time. And um, I had somebody in the live stream the other day ask me why these are so expensive. And the answer that I give to that is the same one, you know, I give every time. And that is because they are professional grade. So when you buy professional grade anything, watercolor, um, uh, acrylic paint, oil paint, paper, anytime you buy something that's professional grade, you're, you're getting the best. So it's going to last longer in, in the, uh, case of watercolors the colors are going to be more vibrant they're going to be light fast they're not going to crack or flake or do weird things you're also going to use less of it it's going to it's going to go longer so a lot of that time you think you're saving money you're actually not saving that much because you're going to have to replenish sooner okay so bear that in mind and it makes you look good. I love that, Nando. It does make you look good, especially if you're just starting out. A lot of times that is one of the things that I see beginning painters, uh, the, one of the mistakes I see beginning painters make. I've been teaching a long time. I've been teaching for 30 years, and um, a lot of times beginning painters will bring in you know, student grade supplies, and then you're fighting an uphill battle to make the paintings look good. So there you go. Thank you for reminding me, Nando. Nando's in the, in the chat room remembering all the good stuff I'm supposed to say. Um, okay, so that's the Core 24. Core 24. I like the way that sounds. What's next in the carousel? Well, I've talked to you about my favorite watercolor brush, the Princeton Aqua Elite. It's just beautiful. Um, let's look at it up close and personal. So the Aqua Elite, I've got, I think I have the size 12 in the carousel. I've got an eight and a, is this an eight? Yeah, I've got an eight and a 12 here with me. Um, I wanna show you a little bit about this. Where did my, where'd my watercolor tablet go? Here's one, okay. So here's my Strathmore watercolor tiles. And the thing that blows my mind about these brushes is first of all, they're not sable they're not it's a synthetic hair and it behaves so much like a sable brush it's kind of mind-blowing so um check out the amount of water that this paintbrush holds it's pretty uh, amazing so i'm gonna load up the water and i'm gonna grab a little quin magenta look at that Ooh. Isn't that gorgeous? Look at that brush. And it's not done yet. There's plenty more. I could keep going. I could probably paint this entire page with just loading it one time. Now, that alone is pretty impressive, right? But then, magenta is my favorite color, how'd you know? <laughs> um, but then if I go back and I bring that back to a point, look at the point on that brush. 
Now look at the fine detail I can get. Look at that. With the same brush. That is pretty impressive, you guys. That's pretty impressive. The point that that comes back to after giving me this big colorful shape. So there you go. Um, now, and here's the other thing. Check out the price on this. This brush today in the carousel, $14.52. Now, if you want to pay $100 for a Kolinsky brush, for a real sable brush, you go right ahead. <laughs> you go right ahead. Um, I've had real Kolinsky brushes, and part of the problem with them being so expensive is you're afraid to use them, right? These brushes, I'm just saying, I'm just saying they're really good brushes. Um, I'm going to pull up, I'm pulling up some of this magenta here. Come back and pull a little bit of that up. And let's get a little something, something. We'll go, we'll put a little cad primrose in there. I don't know what I'm painting. I'm just painting some spherical thing. But I just thought I'd play with it a little bit. So anyway, there you go. That's the um, Princeton Aqua Elite brush. And I love them. I think they're great brushes. So there you go. That's my two cents. Okay. All right. Next on the Hit Parade, we're going to roll back to the um, iPad. We're going to do some digital stuff now. And let's put that iPad back down here so I can see it. We will open up the iPad. I'll get the water container out of the way. That might not be a good idea to have it too close to the iPad. Um, so let's open this up. There we go. All right. So uh, we have the iPad, we're looking at the iPad, and before we get actually to the iPad itself, let's take a look at the case that I have it in, which is the Zugu case. Zugu, <laughs> the Zugu case. Um, these are wonderful cases. I love, love, love this case, and it's super protective. I'm gonna go over to the um, Amazon page for you so you can see the specs on this because it's pretty impressive honestly and I know I know what you're gonna say I know you're gonna say it's too expensive yep I I'm gonna I'm gonna say no it's not <laughs> because I want you to look at this little piece right here this little piece right here free iPad repairs yes really Cracked screen shouldn't be the end. Zugu case covers all Apple Care repair costs. What? Uh huh. Yeah. So, is it is it too expensive? Is it really too expensive? Maybe not. Maybe it's not. Also, it comes in fun colors. So, for me, that matters. I've got the berry purple. It comes in red. It comes in pink and green and cognac brown and a really nice blue and then of course basic black okay so um that is the zugu case it has these 10 let's go back to the overhead camera it has these 10 notches here that are magnetized so when you open it up and put the little feet out the feet are magnetized and you can get all of these amazing angles you get 10 angles so it's pretty nifty there's pretty you know there's probably not an angle you need that you can't get so that's the scoop on that the zugu case and i always say this but it's absolutely true and that is that i never leave the store when my new ipad comes or when i go get it i don't even i don't even leave the store or open the box unless i've got a case ready for it i put it right into a case um, and I mean, I couldn't even tell you if this one is silver or gold or what color it is. I have no idea. Uh, <laughs> because it goes right into the case and I protect them and, and um, I, you know, they're expensive devices. So I make sure to protect it. Let's look at, that was the Zugu case. And I forgot to highlight it, but there it is. It's highlighted now for you. 
And let's also go back and take a look. <laughs> I, keep, I keep forgetting. Hello, I'm here. Look at my face there. <laughs> I keep forgetting to activate the iPad. Um, let's take a look at um, some of the fun stuff you can do on the iPad. I wanted to do just a super quick little clipping mask with you. Um, let's start a new uh, artwork. So I'm in the gallery and I'm going to hit the plus sign that'll open my canvas panel. Actually, you know what? Let's open that one I just did and let's just get, let's just get rid of that. Go. Um, now I'm, I'm not opening multiple canvases all the time because when I demo, I'll end up with like 10 canvases that I need to get rid of because I've done all these crazy demos. Um, so a uh, clipping mask allows you to uh, put a texture or something below or above an image and then um, fill that image with the texture. So what I'm going to do is I'll start on this layer right here. I'll go to my pencil and I'm going to draw with the monoline, which is in calligraphy. I'm going to draw with monoline. It's a nice clean line and um, it'll give you a good color fill. So I'm just going to draw some random shapes. Make sure when you draw them that, they're, that they are touching, like you don't have any, any pixels, any empty pixels right there because things will bleed out. You'll see what I mean here in a minute. So I'm going to just do a couple of these random shapes. Let's go a little bit bigger on the, whoops, white is not going to show there. Um, we'll just do a couple of these and just random shapes in particular, nothing in particular here. Now I'm going to put a layer above that and I'm going to go and pick a texture. Um, I have some custom brushes in here, so I'm going to grab a texture called Paint Stamp and we'll make it turquoise. And I'm going to cover that entire layer in that paint stamp, just like this. Cover the whole thing. Let's go this way too, like that. Just cover the entire layer. Now I'm going to go back to that layer and I'm going to tap on that and I'm going to invoke clipping mask. And oh, I forgot a very important step. Talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> I forgot a very important step. Let's go back to layer number one. We're going to hide layer number two. Oh, that was so silly, Tisa. Totally forgot to do that. Okay, let's go like that. Now I'm going to fill these colors, which is a very important part I forgot to do. Okay, now we'll go back to our layer that has all of the color on it and the texture. Now we will put on clipping mask and you'll see that that turquoise color and texture only goes where the color fill is. That's why it's important that you color fill that layer. And so that gives you this really fun texture on top of the color fill, okay? So let me do that one more time. I will just start all over so you guys can see me do it properly. Let's go back to black. I've got my monoline. I'm going to go to calligraphy and monoline, and I'm going to just draw these shapes, making sure that these shapes are filled. And it doesn't matter what shape I do. So there are my shapes. I'm going to fill them with orange. It's so nice to use a contrasting color when you do this. Now I'll go to my next layer, go to my brush and I'll get texture. I've got some fun textures here. We'll get, we had paint stamp last time. Let's have old cardboard this time. And we'll choose turquoise again. Make sure you're on the right layer. Let's make that pretty large and we'll just cover the whole thing with old cardboard stamp. Keep going, just cover it. Make sure you get those orange covered. That's the main thing. You don't have to worry about the white space, but make sure you've got some in the, in the orange. 
and then tap that layer and tap clipping mask and you can see that that texture lays in only where the color fill is okay so that's a little bit about clipping mask you can have a lot of fun with clipping mask I'll show you a couple of pieces I've done with clipping mask here's one if I can make, get my fingers to work here's clipping mask clipping mask was done on all these shapes here's another one this one all has clipping mask on it as well, the textures and stuff. So have fun with that. You can have a lot of fun with that. Okay, next in your carousel is an Apple iPad Pro refurbished. And let's take a quick look at that on the Amazon page. So you can see some of the cool stuff that, whoops, get my fingers to work. Some of the cool stuff that is um, useful to know when it comes to the um, Amazon refurbished items is that you have that 90 day guarantee. So again, this is a really, really good way for you to get into an iPad Pro. This is the uh, 128 gigabytes. It's a 12.9 inch. It's big like mine. And um, that is plenty enough storage for you to work in Procreate and do all the stuff that you've been seeing me do. And then um, the other thing to remember is you want to save your storage space. You just upload stuff to the cloud. Super easy. Um, this is exactly like the iPad that I'm working on. It's just maybe a year or two older, has a little bit less storage space. But honestly, I've got a terabyte on my um, iPad right now and I haven't even gotten to the halfway mark with all the stuff and I've got probably three or four or five hundred paintings on here in in Procreate and honestly um, I haven't even hit the halfway mark on that terabyte so there you go you can really get into doing digital art at a, at a more of an entry-level cost okay okay Questions about um, the iPad, the Apple Pencil, any of that stuff before I kind of jump back over to some analog stuff. Um, before I leave digital, I do want you guys to take a quick look at this very cool little cover or pad rather, sleeve <laughs> that, I'm, that I use when I travel. Oh, Nando, you just here for the art? Okay. Well, we got all kinds of art, got all kinds of art. We will do it. You name it, we'll do it. We're gonna do some uh, analog art in a minute, some more analog art. We already did a watercolor um, Christmas card. Let's come out a little bit. My camera is a little crazy. Let's go like that, there. Um, this is highlighted. This is just a real, you know, standard little laptop sleeve. I just pull it out to show everybody. It's got this nice padding. It's got a couple of pockets. It's nothing fancy, fun colors, um, and it's not expensive, but it's extra added protection for your device. You can put a 13 inch um, laptop in here. You can put the big iPad Pro 12.9 in here. Not a bad idea to have extra protection for your devices, okay? Um, Nando says, watching people create something activates something in my brain. Yeah, it's true, you know, it does. It's very soothing to do that. that uh, that's why the Bob Ross YouTube channel has so many subscribers, right? Um, next, next in your carousel, a little bit of, speaking of soothing your brain, um, a little bit of Zentangle, okay? Now, who knew, who knew that doodling was so good for you? Well, actually, I did. <laughs> if anybody had asked me, I would have told them years ago, doodling is a really good thing. And uh, this is the perfect little tile to do it on. These are also Strathmore tiles, but these are the Bristol surface. And so, oops, there we go. These are the Bristol surface. They're different from the watercolor tiles because the Bristol surface is smoother, very smooth. And then you combine those with the 
uh, uh, Pigma Micron pens, which I have an entire tray of here. And it's just a match made in heaven. So here is a little, little bit of Zentangle stuff, you know, just playing. That's a little bit of watercolor in the center, but you certainly don't have to have that. And the nice thing about these, these uh, Pigma Micron pins is that they are archival, they're fade resistant, and they're waterproof. So if you put the lines down in the Pigma Micron, and then you come back with a little bit of watercolor, it won't bleed over the, the ink won't bleed, which is really nice. So let's do one. Here's my, I like my number eight is the one I like the best. So we'll just do something very simple. I like spirals. Doesn't everybody like spirals? Is there anybody who doesn't like spirals? We'll just do some spirals. Oh, the music's playing. If I nod off, you guys, <laughs> somebody wake me up. Um, Cause you know, I start drawing and I tend to forget that there is anybody else around. So I've literally um, forgotten that I was doing a live stream because I'm drawing. So it, it happens. And I, th I think that's a good thing, don't you? I hear that people watch Bob Ross to go to sleep at night. I mean, he's so soothing. I want to be just like Bob Ross when I grow up. So I'm just doing some spirals over and over again. And that's the thing about repetitive pattern. It's just, you don't have to think about it. You're just making spirals. You don't have to make any big decisions. Let's have a really big one right here. Okay, I could go on and on and on with my spirals, but I'm gonna, I have to have a little one over here. This one seems kind of lonely. Let's put some little ones right here to keep the big one happy, you know? There, much better, much better. Okay, now I'm gonna let that dry a little bit. I'm gonna let the, by the time I get back with my paintbrush, that'll be dry. And so I'll find my water container is over here. My paintbrush is handy. And I've got a little bit of orangey kind of paint, uh, painty water, but I'm gonna grab my core watercolor and let's do a little something. I think I want my number eight brush, my number 12 brush a little bit too big. Let's take a little, I'm going Queen Magenta again, Nando, just for you, just for you. Just a tiny bit of color. I don't want it really, really too heavy. Is this dry? Yeah. So see, just come back and put a little color down. Not much, don't need much. Put a little color here, put a little there, you know. You don't have to try to match the lines either. That's, that's not really important. Just put a little color down, go outside the lines, you know. You have my permission to go outside the lines. You don't need my permission, but in case you thought you did, let's see, let's have a little orange. I do love this pyrrole orange. Wow, look at that orange, isn't it gorgeous? Little phthalo blue for flavor. Little tiny bit of phthalo blue up here. Yes, little tiny phthalo blue right there. And you see, I am using just the tiniest amount of color. I mean, 
so tiny. These paints, these watercolor paints will last forever and ever and ever because I'm using such a tiny amount, you know, super tiny. Let's see, I was gonna do so, what was I gonna do? I was gonna add a little green to that. There we go. Let's go a little green right here. So there you go, there's just a little, just a little watercolor something, you know? We could have a little watercolor stripe down at the bottom. Let's have a, I do love this pyro orange. You have to be careful though, because it's very strong. Let's just have a watercolor stripe right there. Yeah, that works. And then when it's dry, you could write something on it like dream or believe or maybe we need a star. Should we put a star at the top? Let's put a star at the top. Let's have a star up here. It's not a very good star. My, I should turn it around this way and do it better. Let's do it a little better here. I was getting a little sloppy there. I don't know if that's better or not, but I think I'm making it worse. <laughs> ah, okay, so there's a really good way to fix that. We can fix that. All right, let's let everything dry, 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 dry. Okay, let's, um, is that dry? Oh, that's dry, okay. We'll just write something there, just for the heck of it. Is this my purple one? Yes. We'll just write something right here. There, tiny little watercolor, super tiny little watercolor. And there's our little, our little star, flying star. So there you go. That's a little bit about the Pigma Micron and these wonderful Bristol tiles. They're really great. I love those wonderful little Bristol tiles. And I'm not happy with my star. So I'm gonna go back to my Artistro paint pens, my, my fine point, get my red one, and fix up my star, which I kind of botched. I didn't do a very good job on that star. So let's, uh, let's fix it up. Make it look a little nicer. Tidy up my star. Got a little sloppy. There. Now that's the nice thing about acrylic paint um, and watercolor. Because you can always use acrylic paint on top of watercolor. You can't use watercolor on top of acrylic paint. But you can definitely use acrylic on top of watercolor and tidy up your mistakes. <laughs> ah. So there you go. All right. It reminds you of something, but you can't what can't remember what it is. I hope it's a famous painting. <laughs> okay. Um, what else have we got in the carousel? You've got the Golden Modern Theory Color Mixing Set, and I'm going to pull that up here and put that out for you. Now this is a wonderful set. If you're painting an acrylic, this is a great set to get because it's got everything you need. You don't need a bazillion colors for this to be a great painter. This is a professional grade color. And the other thing it has inside it that I think is really worth 
its weight in gold is this color mixing, um, modern theory color mixing guide. This is amazing. And this is going to tell you everything you need to know about color. It's going to give you the recipes for all kinds of color. Look at that. Eight color, uh, you just have eight tubes of color and you can make all of this. Look how big it is. I'm going to show you how, look at this. See how big that is? It's a really, it's a good color mixing guide. It really is. And it gives you all these recipes. You spend a weekend with this, you get this, this set and the color mixing guide and you will be a color master. It's amazing what you can do with just eight colors. Now the other thing about the color mixing set is it's all modern pigments. So they're really strong. They um, have a high tinting strength. And I'm gonna show you the dioxazine purple here in a minute. I have a little video. I'm gonna show you the dioxazine purple. But the thing about these um, golden acrylic paints is they have that big, thick, buttery texture. They have a high pigment load. They are um, uh, light fast and they go a long way, a really long way. So take a look at this little video about dioxazine purple. So you can see when it comes out of the tube, it comes out and it's fairly dark. It, it almost looks black. Um, and that is what we call the mass tone of the color. And the um, undertone of the color is going to be really, really different with these modern pigments. So see that big shift in color from dark undertone, a uh, dark mass tone to the more brilliant undertone. And whenever you scrape a color down over paper, you're going to see the undertone. And um, then you take a little bit of this paint and mix it with titanium white, and it has a very high tinting strength. So a little bit of it goes a long way. Okay. That's why I said when you're using professional grade paint, you're not going to use as much of it. It's just, it's going to go a lot farther. Now, um, the um, other thing about the golden paint that I like so much is this brush stroke. It holds a brush stroke. It's got a big, thick, buttery texture. So it's the perfect paint if you want some texture. This is the paint you want and it's super yummy. I mean, these paints are just gorgeous. That's why I've been painting with them for 25 years, you know, because they are really gorgeous. So that's the dioxazine purple, and that is in your color uh, mixing modern theory set that's highlighted in your carousel right now. Then the next thing that's in your carousel is the glazing liquid. And I'm gonna grab that so I can show it to you. This is, the acrylic glazing liquid that's highlighted in your carousel. This is almost, I would say, a necessity. If you're an acrylic painter and you are mixing paint and you find out that it's drying up too fast, this is going to help your paint stay wet longer. It's, it's easy to use. You don't have to worry about how much you use or the ratio or anything. It's perfect for keeping your paint wet and workable. Really, really does a good job for that. Okay, I have, I'm just clicking along here. I've got a couple more things I wanna show you. The color wheel, I think you should have, everybody should have a color wheel. And I think that's pretty straightforward. This particular color wheel that's in your um, carousel has a really good layout. Gives you the secondary and the tertiary colors gives you the complements and the split complements. It's a really good color wheel to have, and it will give you the information you need about color. So you really do need that color wheel. Next to the color wheel are my two Italian painting knives that I'm crazy about. I love these guys. These are the, these are the ones that you can use to create the big, thick, buttery, impasto paint. They are very flexible. They clean up well, even though I've got paint on the handles, 
They still clean up really well. You can get all the paint off of them. They're stainless steel and, and really flexible. So love that. Oh, Milton Glaser and Bob Dylan. Oh, well, that's not, that's not bad, bad neighborhood to be in. Milton Glaser, I love his work. Love his work. So these are the Italian painting knives. You see those in your carousel there. Next in our carousel is the canvas, the black canvas from Artistro. I'm gonna pull out my Yayoi Kusama pumpkin that I, I'm still working on this. <laughs> I'm still working on my Yayoi Kusama pumpkin. But the, the cool thing about these black canvases from Artistro is that you can paint on them with white and it shows up really well. So this is the um, extra fine point white markers from Artistro. And once again, if you are gonna get Artistro products, make sure that you use my code and you'll save even more money. Just put my code in there and that'll save you even more money when you buy Artistro products. And as a matter of fact, you know, on Friday, let's see, today's Wednesday, either Friday or Monday, I'm not sure which, I'm gonna do an unboxing of this really fun Artistro product. This one, the Artistro Wood Slices. We're gonna do an unboxing on that. We're gonna paint some wood slices. Let's go take a look at the page, um, the Artistro page because they have some really fun stuff over there. So on the Amazon Artistro page, you'll see all kinds of cool stuff. You will see the um, paint pens that we've been talking about. Right now that replay of a live stream, they're doing a, a plate, um, a ceramic plate. The um, paint pens are here. You can see the wood uh, chips are here, the wood slices. The wood slices are here. They also have rock painting kits. This is gonna be so much fun when you have somebody over a big family gathering and you are all going to sit around and paint the wood slices with your Artistro paint pens and then hang them on the Christmas tree and those are the kind of ornaments that every year they get hung up and they get kept year after year after year. And so your kids or your auntie or grandma is going to make one and, you know, put the date on it. And then, you know, every, you're, you're, if you do it with the kids, they get bigger, you know. And we have a couple that are like, oh, you did this when you were five, you know, and it gets put on the tree. It's so much fun that way, you know, it's just... It just makes it so much nicer when you've got that personal touch. So check with me on Friday. I'm gonna try and do the unboxing on this on Friday. It might be Monday, but check with me on Friday. I'm here every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from three to five, five-ish, depending on whether it's pizza night. On Fridays, it's pizza night, so I might have to leave early. <laughs> um, but check with me on on Friday or Monday and we'll do an unboxing on that. It's going to be fun. We'll do some uh, we'll do some painting on wood slices. We'll make some Christmas ornaments. It's going to be a lot of fun. So there you go. Make sure you use that uh, Acrylic Diva code when you get Artistro products. Make because I'm a I'm an affiliate for them. So make sure you um, make sure you use that code and you'll get a little extra little extra savings, right? Okay, now, um, what's next in our carousel? What do we have next? We're getting, we're wrapping it up because it's not pizza night though, tonight, unfortunately. It's not pizza night, I wish it were. Um, and I wish I hadn't said that now because now I'm hungry. Um, I skipped lunch, so that wasn't a good thing. Okay, we've done the dioxazine purple golden artist colors, but I didn't show you the interference of violet yet. So let's take a look at the Interference Violet. Now this color is a mind blower. This is literally a color that will interfere with the light waves. 
And so it kind of refracts light. It's pretty astonishing what it does. So you can see when I put it out on the page, what it looks like um, when you put it over white and the difference when you put it over black or a dark color. And of course, just like all of the golden heavy body paint, it has that big buttery texture, that big thick texture, it holds a brush stroke. But look at the difference between white and black. When it's on white paper, you don't get as much of a, a refraction. Now look at it over black. It's like, boom. It really does do some amazing things. And it changes depending on how the light hits it. So it can be an amazing, amazing color. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. It really is. Um, and we have, Golden has a lot of those interference colors in the Golden line. And then look what it does to another color. You put another color with it and you make a third color that's like magic. So it's pretty amazing. These colors are highly pigmented and the way that they refract the light is just mind blowing. So yeah, you can do some really fun stuff with that. So that's the Interference Violet that is highlighted in your carousel right now. I think we've just about done everything. I'm going to talk, I'm going to jump over to the Steal Like an Artist book because I want to talk to you about these books because I think they're wonderful gifts for artists. They are wonderful, wonderful gifts for artists. Both of these, Steal Like an Artist and Show Your Work, they're both in your carousel. They're both by Austin Cleon, who is just a really terrific guy. He's very generous. If you're not, if you're not on his mailing list, you should be. Um, you'll find him. This is a New York Times bestseller for a reason, because it's brilliant. And it's a little book. You know, you wouldn't think that it was pack a big punch, but it does. And it also is one of those kind of books that you're going to quote and you're going to go to it again and again and again. And I love this, fake it till you make it. Um, you know, it's just, <laughs> look at this, enjoy captivity. What does he mean by that? He also says something here about being boring. What does he mean by that? Well, I'll tell you something. Here's the thing. If you're an artist, you're going to spend a lot of time by yourself. And you, you better be happy with that. And that's what he means by being boring. So, you know, when everybody else is at the club or they're gone for the weekend or they're traveling or doing whatever, and you're in your studio or you're at the drawing board or you're on the corner of the kitchen table drawing your comic or writing your book or painting your painting or whatever, you're going to be spending a lot of time alone. You better like yourself. <laughs> you're going to be spending a lot of time alone. And he gives you... In this little book, he gives you permission to not only spend your time alone, but also to be creative and unleash your creativity. It's, I, can't, I can't recommend it highly enough. It's a wonderful little book, and over the years, I have, I've been teaching for a long time, like I said, and over the years, I've come across lots and lots and lots of artists who are just starting out, who could really use this boost. And uh, it is, it's pretty amazing how powerful it, this little book is. So if you know someone that is an artist or wants to be an artist or thinks they're an artist and they're not sure, you know, this is a wonderful stocking stuffer. What is it, what's it going for today? Um, they're not expensive. I mean, you know, $9.79. And actually, I think there's a bundle. I think you can get both of these in a bundle. Um, for, you know, like save a little money that way. But I, I just got to tell you, I think it's a really, really good read for an artist. It's an easy read. You don't have to have an art dictionary to read it. And um, he shares lots of good stuff in here. I love this. In the beginning, obscurity is good. That's right. Trust me on that one. Um, yeah. So, you know, take the time. Oh, I love this. Take the time to be bored. Take time to be bored. Yeah, yeah. He says here, one time I heard a coworker say, when I get busy, I get stupid. <laughs> I love that. 
<laughs> when I get busy, I get stupid. I love that. That's great. I may have to write that on my mirror because that's, that's so true. But anyway, two, two really good book for artists. They're great stocking stuffers. This one, Show Your Work. This one gives you license to not wait for a gallery show. I love that. It's like, go make your own thunder, make your own show. Show in your grandmother's hallway, have a show in the front yard, show in your garage, show at the real estate office. Doesn't matter. Just show your work. It doesn't matter. Share the wealth. Okay. All right. There you go. I get excited about these because they're such good books, right? I'm excited about them. Am I boring? Yes, I'm boring. You're right. I am. I'm boring. Yeah. Yeah. And have been for years and years and years, right? So when all my friends were taking fancy uh, summer holidays to uh, Hawaii, guess where I was? I was in the studio painting. Yeah. So what can I say? The other book that I want to talk to you about, and actually he's probably boring, and that's David Hockney. Um, Spring Cannot Be Canceled. One of my favorite artists, um, I've never got to meet him. I wish I had, but you know what they say about meeting your heroes. Maybe it's not a good idea. But this, I waited for this, I pre-ordered this book and I read it almost in one sitting. I could not put it down. He's one of my favorite painters of all time. This book is chock full of his artwork, his ideas about painting, who inspires him, um, just all kinds of stuff. And he's done it all, printmaking, stage design, acrylic paint, um, digital painting, video, photography, watercolor, you name it, he's done it. And I love the fact that he is not afraid to experiment and he's not afraid to fail. So when digital art first came out, he adopted it right away. He took it up right away. And there was a wonderful show of his digital work at the Legion of Honor in San Francisco a few years back and it was just amazing. And so, great book, very readable, super conversational. Martin Gayford is an old friend of his, and you don't have to have an art dictionary to read it. It's really readable. You're going to refer to it again and again. You're going to look back at it and, and read paragraphs again and again. Um, Hiroshiga is one of his um, uh, inspirations. Manet is in here, Monet. Um, Velasquez, Ong, all of these wonderful inspirational artists that he looks to and also tons and tons of his own work. Oh, look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Wow. Now that's in, he painted that in 1974. I suspect that that is oil on canvas. Probably in 74 that was oil. And then if you look at something that he did in 2000, you know, like this one. Well, let's see. Okay. 2020, you know, you can see the entire, you can see his whole life of an artist here. It's pretty amazing. So there you go. I thought you'd like that. David Hockney, Spring Cannot Be Canceled. Wonderful book. All right. Where are we on the carousel? Have I covered everything? Oh, there's another book I haven't covered. It's mine. <laughs> if we're going to talk about inspiration, we might as well talk about my book too while we're at it, right? What do you think, Nando? What do you think? Should I, should I talk about my book? Nando has a copy of my book. Um, so yeah, I wrote this for Northlight Books and um, my whole point in writing it was to empower people to be more creative. And so I came at this from the idea of let's do lots of stuff. Like what can you do from your kitchen junk drawer? Pretty amazing what you can do with a junk drawer. What can you do when you don't have anything to paint with? My friend Elise Marshall was up in Aspen and didn't have anything to paint with. And so she ended up painting on the Sunday newspaper and it came out great. So lots of, lots of information, 
talk to you about color mixing. Thank you, Nando. I'm glad you like it. Um, a bunch of things you can do. I bet you didn't know that you could paint with, with beans from the kitchen. What if you glued beans to the canvas? What would happen? Or what if you took the labels from um, orange, orange juice and, and glued them down? And there's the one she did in Aspen on the Sunday, Sunday newspaper. So you know what? Don't let the idea that you don't have any art supplies stop you. Whatever you've got handy will, will do. And there are artists all throughout history who have used less than nothing to make art. So if you've got a, a piece of paper you found on the floor and um, some string and a bit of glue, then you're good to go, okay? All right, so there you go. That's my book. You can get that on Amazon. My other two books are over there as well. And uh, all of them except one are in Kindle as well, so you can get that. All right, we did it. I think we got through the entire carousel, didn't we? Did I forget anything? Let's see. Did I forget anything? Looks like we got through most everything. I don't think I, I don't think I talked about the X-Acto knife. <laughs> All right, um, if you are not following me, please hit that follow button and visit that link that's down below there and that will tell you how to enter the contest. I give something away every month. Just a few days ago, I gave away some free classes in my, in my online school. And coming up this month, I haven't decided what I'm giving away yet. I have a feeling it might be digital artwork. So there you go. Have a good one, Nando. You have a good one, evening. Everybody else have a fabulous evening wherever you may be. And keep making fabulous artwork, creativity, however you do that. If, are you gluing macaroni to a cigar box? Good for you. Do some more, all right? <laughs> keep making that magic and Show it to the world because the world needs to see your magic, all right? I'll see you back on Friday at 3 o'clock. I'm here every Monday, Wednesday, Friday from 3 to 5-ish. And have a great day. Thanks for joining me. Bye-bye.